Today's video, we start with a hydration chart. Am I hydrated? Aim for clear urine at least 10 times a day. Eat a diet rich in fresh fruits and vegetables. Drink a quart of water before meals. Thank you. So is YouTube a viable income stream? We've got a question on Tumblr. You can go, you can go check out my Tumblr. Just Google up doing it on Tumblr and I answer a lot of questions there. Um, is it a viable income stream anymore? It's not, it's not at all. Unless you're Casey Neistat, you can see that, now not, not throwing, it's not a hate video, not throwing shade too much, but just share my comments and criticisms. But if, uh, ooh, supermodel, if we have uh, Casey Neistat as an example, you know, he's very family friendly, he never swears. He's not allowed to swear. It's almost like in his contract with someone, he's like, he has to bleep out everything. And YouTube love him, you know. Uh, I remember back in the day, I used to get more monthly views than Casey. I remember my case was like a million views a month. Uh, I'm still on about two million views a month. Two, three, four, five, depends on the, depends on the time of year, what's going on. But uh, so Casey Nice, he's in the Apple iTunes uh, YouTube app. When you see YouTube, you'll see Casey Nice in the little thing. So he's the picture perfect example of what YouTube wants in its creators. Uh, due to the whole controversy with PewDiePie, uh, Jenna Marbles as well, but PewDiePie did some controversial stuff, you can Google it up. PewDiePie, YouTube controversy, I just got out of bed, I'm just sort of waking up. But, uh, so PewDiePie did that, and then that just, advertisers started pulling out. And YouTube's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So gone, gone, and the long gone days are where you could just monetize anything. You know, street fights, fucking full netty bra content, vegan stuff, it's all getting demonetized. Most of my videos are demonetized. I remember the days back in 2012, 2013, I was just pulling 10 grand a month from YouTube views. 10K a month. That's never going to happen again. Um, I mean, no, nah, it's not. Not with vegan content, because vegan content is not advertiser friendly. That's why you see people who are all about the money. You see them take the vegan out of their title or titles, you know. You see, um, you know, someone's first thing was vegan, such and such, and now all of a sudden, now it's just such and such. It's like, hey, where's, where's the vegan part going? You took it out just to make more money? What? It, but it's like, I don't know, it's a weird world. <laughs> it's a weird world. Or people are like, I can't do YouTube anymore because it's not making me money. I'm going to have to get a real job. Please donate to my Patreon or I'm going to have to quit. <laughs> it's like, they start crying. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? People give them money. They give them money to see the onion tears. Get, say, let, me, let me chop an onion. Hang on. There's a little onion there. Ah, hang on. <laughs> I really care about the animals. It's my bank balance I really give a fuck more about. But I'm fucking... I just want to jump on get permanent vacation lifestyle. I do not. It's good and I haven't got it yet. So please help me. Oh my god. <laughs> I fucking the last out there. Anyway, the vegan YouTube community is going to shit. It's just showing who's about the money, who's about buying designer dogs and feeding them full of elk meat. Is that what you do with your Patreon money? Buy fucking designer dogs <laughs> for your husband, I mean your wife, and feed them fucking elk meat and call yourself vegan. Just for the money. Oh my god. It's, I don't know. <laughs> you have to laugh, man. Because if you take it too seriously, you'll burn out quick. But anyway, so should you go back to university? You've quit university, you've tried to make it on YouTube, you didn't, and now you're working at Starbucks because you took Dan Ryder's advice. <laughs> no, seriously, in my ebook, Carve the Fuck Up, that advice still applies. So if you are willing to work your ass off, you still can make it, especially if you're female, especially if you're good looking. You know, it makes it a lot easier. But here's the thing. Tori comes for money. She doesn't have to do YouTube. She enjoys it. She enjoys helping people out, making her vlogs, doing her things. She doesn't have to do it. She comes for money. Me? I don't come for money. I come from the street. I still don't have to do it. I can always go back on welfare, whatever. I really enjoy doing YouTube if you couldn't tell. I enjoy it. I get paid for it as well. Um, that's the bonus. I was doing YouTube for four years before I even knew you could monetize your account. You know. So I, I do it because I love doing it. I turn up because I love doing it. I do my festival because I love doing it. Whether I get paid or not, whatever. I mean, everyone needs money. 
the money I get now, I'm investing it in the little vegan clothing company I've just started up a few days ago. I'm really excited about that. Just get that message out there. And the reason why my clothing's so cheap is because I give the savings to you guys and I give the profits, majority profits, to the, the factory itself, you know, the owners, the workers, etc. And that way, during riders like the little 10%, 20% commission, you guys get the massive savings and you share that with the, the company who provides the labor, materials, designs, etc. to put out those uh, vegan jerseys, cycling stuff as well. And we've got running kits coming as well. So, I mean, how much money does one really need to live? You know, you know me that I live in a cheap place. I can afford a lot more flash. This is 4,000 baht, 4,200 baht a month. You know, this knife was like maybe a dollar or something like that. So it's my costumes and props. You know, I do low overheads, man. Haircuts do myself. I've got actually the Gregor cuts growing back. I've got to fix it up. So it's all about how much money do you want? And you see these people parading around wearing Versace sunglasses, Gucci shit, staying in flashy hotels, and you go, yep, that's what you're about, man. You're about the motherfucking money. Um, and you would never see these people camping out. <laughs> You'd never see them doing it hard, you know, ever, because they're just, they're just not hard people. If you are a hard person, you still can make it on YouTube. But don't do it for the money, man. Never do nothing for the money. Do what you're passionate about. Do what you're passionate about. I wear this old, broken hat that's fallen apart. I've had it for, since 2008, so nine years now. I wear it because I like it. It feels comfortable, but more importantly, I'm going to show them a little message here. And it looks a bit dorky because it's a cycling cap. Most people don't get it, but I like it. Don't do it for the money, do it for the passion. And if you're just doing YouTube for a job, man, it's not worth it because it's, a, it's the toughest job out there because you're gonna get, if you start making good money, you're gonna get a lot of haters, a lot of critics. And I know, I know, man, I know all, I know all the vegan YouTube crew out there in person. I helped them get their channels going. 99.9% .9 of them. I knew them before they had 1K subs. And I can tell it in their eyes, most of them are not enjoying it. You see relationship struggles, someone's getting more attention and from fans or whatever or you know and then there's money coming in it's like hey you're making your you know the girl or the guy's making a lot of money and their the, their partner's making fuck all and, it's, and then there's that big income discrepancy when and money can cause massive conflict relationships trust me i know all about that so you know it's it's uh it's a great job but it's don't do it for the money man those who do it for the money will be punished metaphorically they'll be punished with the haters, and, and I see it, man. People are just not really enjoying it. You find something in life that you would do for free. If you have to get online and cry and e-beg and say, oh, I can't do it anymore, then you know those persons ain't doing it for the fucking, the passion for the animals or whatever. That's just the guys. And I'm glad those people out there doing their thing. That's good. I'd rather have them, you know, doing videos about, you know, get, eating carb strong diet or high carb this, that, whatever. I'm glad they're doing that. Uh, but don't be confused what their intention is. But um, I mean, it's business for them. It's business for them, that's fine. But don't make it your business. Don't make it business, make it your passion. And you're gonna have a lot more enjoyable life. I mean, where are a lot of these people gonna be when they're 40? My age, I'm 40, you know? I doubt they're gonna be just kicking back in Thailand with you know their rich 21 year old girlfriend or whatever, just riding their bike around. We wake up this morning, we're like, what should we do today? You know, do we go to Malaysia for durian? Do we ride up the doy? Do we go get the bikes fixed up? You know, do we go and print out some more cycling clothing? What do we do today? You know, and that's the sort of freedom that I've created in my life. But it's all about you know doing what you want to do in life. And if you're caught up in the greed and the money and the status and the subscribers, and I mean, I've, I'm my my talking about subscribers, my YouTube channel's been stuck on. 196, 197, 198, 190k subs for over a year. There's some glitch going down there. It's just like stuck. It's like, uh, 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 uh. I don't give a fuck. You know, my, my people would me all the time. I, you know, I've been unsubscribed from your channel. And you don't shuffle my notifications. What's going on? I'll write to YouTube. My YouTube support, which is they're pretty cool, but they're just like, we don't know what's going on. You know, like, it looks all right from our end. But so if you, if you let those things stress you out, you're going to burn out real quick. You know, every day is a new day. Every day I wake up, I'm like, today's a new day. What's good to focus on? You know, all right, I wake up, I've got two fucking legs. Let's use them. I've got two hands, one, two. Let's use them. I've got two eyes. Let's use them. 
You might not have those eyes tomorrow. You might not have those hands and feet tomorrow. You got them now, so fucking use them. You might not have a mobile phone. I'm using my iPhone 6. This is my first ever smartphone from 2014. You know, I bought this uh, 2014. It's still running. It's my first ever smartphone. You know, it's my first phone I've, I've ever got, smartphone. And I was at age 37 or whatever. So I'm a late bloomer. I'm an example of what can be done. But it's the passion, man. If you don't have the passion, if it's just your profession, you're not going to be having fun. And I see it, man. These people are doing like copyright claims and like, you used my photo, you didn't credit it. And all this. It's like, man, you are not the person you pretend to be online. It's like, love you guys. You are not minimalist, man. You are not where you pretend to be. And and that's fine. It's not no part of, it's no grey on my shade. But uh, I know those people in your life would not be loving it, man. And that's one thing I've built this entire community, this high carb community, you know, this income thing. So I am to blame for a lot of the good stuff and a lot of the bad stuff. That is my fault. Because I set out there saying, I was flashing the cash back in 2012, just like, hey, look how much money you can make on YouTube. And people are like, oh, I want that lifestyle. They saw me and Freddie cruising around. And they see me and Tori cruising around. And the people want that lifestyle. Um, but if you want it just for this, because the ease and stuff, it's like fitness on a bike. You've got to work for it, man, every day. Uh, how can we wrap this video up? Just remember that every day you could be dead. You could die today. You know, you're alive now, so make the most of it. And if you're worrying about money and stuff, chances are you're spending money where you shouldn't. Downsize your life. Move to Thailand. Oh, I've got kids, I can't do that. Yes, you can. This, huh, I met a family from Holland who've been cycling around the world with their kids. And, 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 and someone said to me, oh, my kids wouldn't do that. You don't give your kids fucking choice, man. Discipline your kids. You're a fucking parent. You, your kids don't have choice. You decide what's best for them. All right? Yeah, kid. Oh, the kid finds a bag of fucking heroin and a syringe. Oh, let, let, let little Johnny use it. Let him experience it for himself. No, no. You know, the kid wants to fucking cut himself up to see what his fucking arteries look like. No. You know, like, you have to be the parent. You have to say, this is how it fucking is. Take it or leave it. All right? You know, the kids should be keeping up with you, not you keep up with them. Um, so downsize your life. Consolidate stuff. You know, move to areas where you don't have to be in that high stress, but most people don't do that. It's like diet. Most people don't want to change their diet to reverse their type 2 diabetes, their heart disease, their obesity, their depression. Most people don't want to do that, you know? Most people don't want to do that. Most people want to take steroids, like the contraceptive pill, to clear their skin versus clean the diet up. You know, I read it again on the internet this morning, it's like, oh, I went to my doctor and he gave me estrogen and it cleared my skin up. And it's like, stop wearing two inches of fucking foundation on your face. Stop eating all that high fat, greasy vegan food or whatever else you're eating. Detox your body, do more exercise, and you'll have clear skin. Don't go to the doctor and take drugs, in my opinion, you know? But people would rather do that than put in the hard work. People are scared of hard work. I mean, my generation was scared of hard work. And this generation are really fucking scared of hard work, most of them, really fucking scared of it. It's like the lost, it's been lost, man. Adversity, people just can't, people's definition of adversity is waiting an extra two minutes in the fucking lineup at Starbucks. Oh my God, I have to wait for my coffee. It's from Colombia that cost 20 cents per pound to produce. And I have to wait an extra two minutes for this. You know, like people just, that's, that's the idea of adversity. Adversity is like, I didn't get enough likes on my Instagram page. <laughs> that's adversity for some people. Someone made a video about me on YouTube and I feel really good. That's adversity for some people, man. <laughs> I couldn't find a car park and my psychiatrist is clinic this morning. I had to walk 50 blocks, five blocks, one block. I had to walk 50 meters in the rain. My mascara started to run. My creatine ran out, you know? Didn't turn up on Amazon shipping, one click. Adversity. Where are we going with this? This is a rant, but the, you know, go to, if you want to be a lawyer, be a lawyer. If you want to be a YouTuber, be a YouTuber. If you want to be a professional cyclist, be at the Tour de France or with Deliveroo, do that. Don't do anything for the fucking money. If you want to be a hooker, a prostitute, stripper, don't do it for the money. Once you start doing things just for the money, that's when you really lose your heart. That's when you really lose your soul. Everyone needs to make some money. But we don't really need that much money, do we? Half the world lives on less than $2 a day. Think about it. Half the world lives on less than $2 a day. Where are they living? Indonesia, Thailand, Bangladesh, India, various parts of Africa. 
move to those locations and live on five bucks a day. You know, and live, you know, like, so there's the, the biggest scam out there is this bank economy where we're like, you have to have a Mercedes, you have to have a Porsche, your house has to be big, has to have seven rooms, three bathrooms, you have to have the Kylie Jenner makeup, you have to have the S Works latest bike, special edition, Mark Cavendish full natty brass stickers. You have to have that. And that's the biggest lie, the biggest bullshit out there. And people chase that for status. Because their biggest thing they're scared of every morning is waking up and looking in the mirror and seeing that person. They're, they're the ones who are scared of themselves. And never be scared of your own reflection, man. Because if you are, and you use all these material and cosmetic things to enhance, to try and change the way you are, who you look, whatever, your age or whatever, then you're always going to be just caught in that little fucking trap, that little mouse trap, that little guinea pig wheel, little hamster dial, and just running around. The corporations be like, yeah, we've got a fucking another sucker. So you just think you don't need that much money to live. And it's not about being a Scrooge, it's just about minimizing and going, yeah, well, I don't really need that. You know, I don't need 22 bikes like Duran Rider. You don't. You don't. You don't need a house like Duran Rider. You don't even need to live in an apartment like Duran Rider. You can camp out, man. You can do it. There's plenty of places. You can teach English. You can work at, help it at an orphanage. You can just be a fucking Buddhist monk walking around Thailand, man. You know, doing that. Do that for a year. That'd be a great experience. So, YouTube versus university. Why you should quit YouTube and go back to uni. <laughs> Only do that if that's what your passion is. Always motherfucking follow your heart. Don't follow your mind. Don't follow the budget. Follow the heart, otherwise anything else, you will be just like every other motherfucker out there <clears throat> chasing this impossible dream, the finances. I mean, look at, the, look at the celebrities out there. Boom, blowing their fucking brains out, man. Most supermodels, Victoria's Secret models, etc., popping hell pills. Depressed, anxious as fuck. I mean, obviously they don't have to stay slim, so they starve themselves and that anxiety is getting triggered, but they, I mean, they look great and all this magic, but they don't. They've got hair extensions, super makeup, they don't look like who they are in real life, and when they wake up and look in the mirror, they compare themselves to their stage person, and they're like, oh my god, this is crazy, I can't handle that reality, and so just like, boom, 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 Xanax, popping pills, Hollywood celebs, Robin Williams, Michael Jackson, all the money, all the fucking pussy in the world, Justin Bieber, boom, boom, you know? Depressed as fuck, you can see it in their eyes, look at Bieber, washed out as fuck, hating life, man, you know? So... Don't think that the money and the fame is going to make you happy because there's a zillion examples in history of Hollywood, celebrity, boxing, MMA, whatever, making big coin, committing suicide, drug overdoses, crazy shit, bashing their wives, bashing their husbands. The money and fame won't make you happy, you know? Being a lawyer won't make you happy unless that's your life purpose. You know, what makes you happy is being happy in the moment, living your life purpose every day, understanding that there's adversity around every corner, Challenges here for us to grow stronger, be better people, inspire more others to get out of the same rut. No such thing as problems, only solutions. A situation, a problem is just a situation waiting for a solution. Things like that. Just saturate your brain with like positive affirmations that become your persona every day. And you personify that in your daily action. And that's when your life really starts to go on. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like I have a greater participation in my daily reality than anyone I've ever met in my life. Just because I understand that whole money system, this, the, the, the status bullshit, the, 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 the people chase this impossible thing, you know? And I've, I've made you know, $12,000 in a day before. I've made more money than I know what to do with my best of my life, you know? I don't need this much money. That's why I can make such affordable content. But I tell you what, is is people out there who are chasing that, they're just gonna like relax on the beach in Thailand. I've done that, man. I've done that for 12 fucking years, every fucking year. It won't make you happy, you know? It'll be like novel, and you can just, just brag to your mates about it. Yeah, I didn't tell you what I was just hanging out in a coconut tree. Yeah, but what else? What's next? Your life purpose isn't to hang out in a beach under a fucking coconut tree eating bananas, you know? I mean, that's a healthy activity, but that's not your life mission. Given all the problems in today's world, I would say pick one and pursue that with passion. And if you make money in it, it doesn't matter. Don't look at your bank balance. Look at your fucking heart balance. Does this thing make me get up early out of bed in the morning? Does it keep me up late at night? Do I have to discipline myself to go to bed early so I can get up early and con continue that passion? If that's the case, then you're on the right track. You know, um, I talk about it in my ebook, Carve the Fuck Up. There's many ways to find your life purpose. You can spend 
you know, a couple of days in a dark room by yourself. And you don't leave that dark room until you've written down some life purpose direction. And that may change. You know, your life purpose might change from year to year, from month to month. Mine hasn't. 2008, I was in Penang, ran off the top of a mountain. And I said, I'm not coming back down until I, you know, work out what the deal is. What's my life purpose? And it was just like to inspire people to go vegan through fitness and health and exercise. To just show people you can be a fucking vegan athlete. You can be an athlete, but you'll be a better athlete being vegan. To show people that animal products aren't necessary. That in fact, if you ditch them out, you'll be better. Um, and so I wrote down my life purpose is to show people you know, vegan life's the way to go. Just to mainstream vegan. 2008. And then I did that again to water fast in 2007. A waterfall in, uh, what's it called? Um, oh, fuck. It was in, near, near Mariba. Emerald, um, Emerald Falls. I think it's called Emerald Falls. Just do a water fast there for a couple of days. It's the same thing. I was like, I can't do this. I've got to be out there you know, sharing the message, sharing the example, ride my bike. That's what I do good. Ride the bike every day, long distances, whatever. Just sharing it out there. So find out what your life purpose is and bang it out. But all these people out there who are just like worried about their image or their like eyebrows or fucking just shit that doesn't really matter. No one really gives a fuck, man. No one really gives a fuck if you've got 2,000 subs, 200 subs, 200 million subs. They might for a minute, but they'll be forgetting about you pretty soon. They don't, they don't really give a fuck if you've got a bit of cellulite or if your teeth aren't that perfectly straight or whatever, you know? No one really gives a fuck for that much because they've got their own problems going on, you know? People forget about you. People will, I forget about a lot of people in my life, you know? And you see them and go, oh yeah, 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 you remember them again. There's so many people, there's like 7 billion people on the planet, man. Like, people are going to forget about you. People are going to love you. They're going to hate you. It's just human nature. People die. People come and go. You know, things come and go. It's nothing's permanent, man. Nothing's permanent. So just relax when you're so self-critical of yourself. Like, it doesn't matter if you're super fat or super thin or super fit or super unfit. End of the day. You know, do your best every day and aim to improve. But if you're not perfect, understand that nobody else is. So drop that perfectionism mindset. Um, and just relax and get it fucking done. Just you know, do something. Do something. Pick up cans off the street. Pick up some plastic off the beach. Do something every day to make this world a better place. And that's when you really start to feel that, you know, once you start serving others at making the world a better place, genuinely, then that's when you know, happiness starts to really pour in your heart. Uh, and they, I was reading a saying the other day, um, those who Apologize first to the bravest. Those who forgive have the most courage. And those who forget are the most happy. And I thought that was pretty, that's a pretty powerful quote. So uh, just get on with your life. Get it fucking done. You know, don't cut yourself up over the past. So many people are cutting themselves up over the past. You know, it's like, why? A knife is for cutting open fruit. Right? Maybe it's a self-defense one day, but... A knife is for just chopping open fruit, cutting open zip ties. It's not for hurting yourself, man, or other people. So stop cutting yourself in your head. Carve the fuck up. Get it fucking done. Quit university. Go to YouTube. Go to quit YouTube. Go to university. Doesn't matter as long as you're following your heart and you're doing what needs to be done on the planet. That's what we need to do. This life is the chance to do my thing.